This is Boxing Tickets, and I we are delighted to be joined for the first time in nearly three years with the returning Callum Bradley. How are you, Callum? All good. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm 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 delighted today. If if there was one person I wanted to see back in the sport, it was yourself. Um, for anybody that obviously doesn't know, um, well, obviously not too many people will know, but I've sort of tortured you constantly for the last three years to get you back in the ring. So I'm like a proud. Proud older brother, sort of in a way, you know, it's, you know that you're back. But does it sort of feel like, like a sort of like you're starting out again? Sort of does it feel like obviously rolling back five years to 2019 when you were turning over? Does it feel like sort of that sort of giddy stage to you? That you're sort of returning, like the return of the king. You know, it's like it's like uh, Luis Suarez or Fernando Torres come back to <laughs> Liverpool. Sort of does it give you that sort of feeling? You that buzz. It is definitely very exciting time. So uh, obviously I knew it was happening for a while now, but uh, I just can't wait now to get the, the fights and all lined up and get all that sort of. I think since the last time you you boxed, Liverpool's won the Premier League. They have during <laughs> No, was it no they won it before it. Did they won I it thought. before? There we go. I was yeah. thinking I was on during, during COVID, mate. They won it during COVID. I, I, I thought, thought it was on... COVID. I thought it was only a good thing and I was sort of thinking, you know. Is Callum obviously going to return now that Liverpool's won the Premier League? <laughs> you took out much abuse from people, obviously, over the years. I know. Um, but I guess for anybody that sort of doesn't know, obviously, you're 5 and 0 as a pro. Um, obviously, a, a lot of your fights were before COVID, sort of, you made your debut 2019 and sort of just as COVID had sort of finished, um, coming up three years. So, like, what, what obviously led the the sort of your inactivity sort of for the last three years, like was there a particular reason for it or was it always a plan that sort of because you were so young, you would come in, dip your toe, come out and come back in again? Um, Not really. Um, I had my first three fights within like six, six months, I think it was. So I was good. I stayed active. And then I think it was eight months to have my fourth pro fight. And then uh, it was obviously COVID hit then. So it was 18 months. Um, I had my fifth fifth pro fight, and then after that, then sort of quieted down a wee bit. And then my contract finished up with my former management, so I just sort of took a step back. Just didn't really want to rush into anything with any with any other management. Just took my time. Still, still trained away, and was still involved in the game. So that was it. Obviously, I've always you know we always speak and everything else, and sometimes it left you in peace. But you've always trained constantly. You know you you know. Sometimes when you have appeared out of the ring, sometimes it's hard to come back and everything else. But you've always enjoyed the sport. You've always been a fan of the sport more than anything. Because like you'll obviously have sent me, you know, if I didn't catch up with fight news somewhere, you'd have gone, here, have you seen this? So you've always stayed in love with the sport. So like these three years out of the ring, you know, probably use an example of Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury had a couple of years out of the ring and put on 10 stone. You know, you haven't obviously put on 10 stone yeah. Um, I'm, we're going to sort of come into that later on in the interview we're actually going to come down and wait as well but like what obviously what like was there offers made to you from, from people obviously like just to confirm obviously you've, you've signed um, you've signed obviously a co-management deal with David McGinley and, and a former world champion boxer and now world champion trainer Anthony Crowley like was there other offers before that sort of mix came about like you've taken your time to work out this deal um, you know, I'm, I'm guessing obviously the talent that, that I know you have and anybody's seen you, you've obviously had maybe offers elsewhere, but maybe it just hasn't worked out for you and, and and what you want moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, we've chatted maybe a few managers over here in Ireland and then overseas as well. Um, but things just I just don't think it it was sorted. It was right for me. You know what I mean? Just I. I'm someone like you says. I'm someone that's, that loves the game. So sort of look at managers and what way they've managed other people's careers and just sort of what they're like as a person as well. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot that comes into it. Um, for me anyway, and I just didn't want to jump in that thing with just someone that I didn't really know or someone that someone that just didn't didn't fit right for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like so, um, I was going to say sort of you know when you when you do deal sometimes you want the deal to be sort of like a lifetime sort of thing. You know you want the you don't want to be having to worry about changing management, changing trainers and things like that. So you obviously have taken your time and probably that's showing your maturity. Now, obviously, not that I'm saying you weren't mature before, but but at 19, when you were sort of starting out, 
Some they would have signed that contract and you wouldn't even look at it. Whereas exactly. being, you're a bit older, you're a bit wiser, and you'll go, this next move I want to make is going to be hopefully me until the day I retire. Exactly. 100%. Definitely. I think a lot of boys just turn professional just to say that they're a professional boxer. Do you know what I mean? And they don't actually look into the, the, the small details of who's actually looking after them and what they've got in plan and, and place for their career. Do you know what I mean? How did they, how did obviously, I guess, they, you know, David obviously McGinley obviously has come into the sort of sport as a as a new guy sort of in twenty twenty four. Obviously he's helped a lot with the deal for for Owen Lavin. Obviously um, he's obviously same with Frank Warren and two five eight management and stuff like that. Like how did the link up? Because I'm guessing obviously that link up came with David first before Anthony Crowe. Yeah, yeah. How how did that um, sort of come about? Uh, well, obviously that's massive. David's he's young and he's he's hungry to the game so. Um... He wants to be involved. He's a real interest for the sport. So which is which is brilliant. Like so, um, obviously he's got Owen Lavin signed up with uh, Frank Warren and Two Five Eight Management. So that's you can't get much bigger than that. There, do you know what I mean? Um, and then obviously David, I think I was I was up training with D. Obviously I've been training away with D. D. Nearly was about ten, eight or nine months now with D. So and then David, obviously he got text me, just give me a contact, just say you know. Good luck, it was going to be day, hope to see you back very soon. And then it just kicked off from there. We just got chatting and I just says, I'm still training the way and not signed with anybody yet. And we just we just had a couple of calls and he actually came down to Oma to meet me for a cup of coffee and stuff like that. So it, start, it all started there, do you know what I mean? So it was it was very good. It's it's weird sometimes, obviously, how you, you know interactions can go. Like, obviously, just by him asking you, you know, and, I know, and I know I've spoken to David obviously on a personal level as well. Like, he's taking his time to sort of... You know, in the same way where you've taken your time over the last three years to come back into the sport, he's been obviously building up the contacts. He's been going to the shows, seeing obviously how, how everything works within the sport. So then when he set up, he was already ahead, which is pretty similar in a way for you because you're coming back already 5-0 and as a pro. You know, it's not like you're coming back and it's, you've taken three years at the amateur game and going pro. Yeah. You're coming back and obviously your next fight, you'll move to 6-0 and and people are going, where is this guy? And you're like, where have you sort of climbed out from under a rock and got six fights straight away? Like you're you're coming back probably more knowledge, more hungry probably in a way. Not to say you weren't hungry before, but that hunger and drive and determination to su- succeed will be probably even more than it was before. Exactly, definitely. Like there's a lot, lot that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see. And obviously David's the same. He's been to the shows. He's he's seen the contracts. He's listened to people. So. It's obviously the same on my end too. Like I've been to different gyms. I'm, I'm always learning off different people. So obviously he like I said, he's young and hungry to the game and he wants to learn. He's gonna be pushing me and you know what I mean? So it's gonna it's gonna I think it's gonna work uh, really well. And how did it then obviously that it's David's links then obviously with with Owen obviously training with Anthony Crawler is obviously that then led the, the Anthony Crawler becoming a co manager as well then? Yeah, and then there's Dominic McGuinness who actually is involved as well. So it's Anthony Crawl and Dominic McGuinness under Project Boxing. Mm-hmm. So Dominic, Dominic McGuinness has been very good as well. He was, um, I think he was com- doing the commentary for the Zone in the last Conlon show. Yeah. So he was, he's he's been around the shows and he's uh, he's very big into the sport. So he's been great as well. So um, so obviously, Ant trains Owen. Um, so then obviously we got in contact there, and then I headed over to Manchester a few weeks ago. And I uh, got a training session in with that as well, and got to meet each other and got talking. And then he was very impressed that because I'd done a training, I was, I was flying from 6 a.m. So I was up from two, and I was training at nine. And then they were sparring after they spar every Friday. So uh, I done my training session along with Rihanna, Rihanna Dixon. So she's world champion. Like, so that's the caliber of fighters that are in the gym. Like, mm-hmm. and then uh, so trained, and then they were doing sparring. I said, So I've got the gum shield as well. So then I, he was impressed by that, you know, I've trained and then I want to jump in the spar. So I jumped in the spar then with uh, Muhammad Ali, who signed by Eddie Heron, like 4 no prospect as well. So I think he was, they were very impressed with that. So that's why they're calling me Ireland's best kept secret. So it was good. Like it's, it's obviously, I've always known your talent and like, with the, even with you training with D the last while, like I've even noticed with D, like, D probably would have seen a lot of your fights as well because you'd have been on card. Might not have seen as much, obviously, with a pair of other fighters, but he couldn't believe it how sharp you are I, in like nearly three years of the ring. And it sort of got to the stage where I was going, like, are you are you 
far and the 20 quid here and there to say nice things about you. But yeah. I've known your talent, you know, that obviously you were a very slick, stylish boxer. But but it seems to be you're, you're going to be coming down in weight, you know. So, like, where you don't have a stoppage so far, like, and from what I've heard, obviously, you could probably have stoppages and you could have had stoppages in sparring. Like, it seems to be you sort of brought your man strength on in these last three years you've been out of the ring. Yeah, definitely. I've been working a lot with my strength, and then obviously that's gonna help when I'm coming down in weight. So uh, I just uh, I just can't wait now to get get back at it. You know what I mean? It's it's been a long time, like you said. I just uh, I can't wait to show now. I think people are gonna show a lot of interest. They're gonna they're gonna want to watch me. Is he better or is he worse? And I just can't wait to just to show them. It's obviously gonna be better, isn't it? Exactly, hundred percent. I've stayed sharp, and obviously. I've been building up my own uh, my own business as well, my gym. So I've been coaching like in the gym every single day. So I've, I'm always learning and I'm always watching boxing. So that's going to help me a lot too. And um, like obviously you were as far up as I think as a bit super featherweight at one stage. Obviously in, in some of your pro fights because of opponents and stuff like that because you can't make certain weights. Like what weight class are you looking to get down to? When, obviously as you get back to title level, obviously as a pro. So hopefully, my plan is to go back down to Super Bantam for the first few fights. I'm going to make that easy. I'm going to go down to Bantam, mate. Bantam, wait. <laughs> like, like, when you were boxing before, like you probably thought I could never make Bantam weight, but like, how is it becoming easier for you as you're getting older to, to, to lose more weight? I'm not sure. I think it's just I'm a lot more active now. Um, Obviously, before fights, like, I would have ballooned up. Do you know what I mean? Like, sorry, not before fights, between fights. Mm-hmm. You weren't really doing much, so sort of just I've learned now just to keep keep going. Whereas before, it would have been just relaxing for a couple of weeks and putting on weight, and your way up in weight, and then coming back down. So now I'm just I'm always active, like I'm running half marathons, I'm coaching every day, doing pads every day, I'm training every day. So my weight's literally low. If you can you can see on my face, like do you know what I mean? Whereas mm-hmm. before, would have been a bit chubby. <laughs> it's I guess like you know it's that's it's not just the thing where you where you love the sport so much that like. You know, you're now realizing probably for you to take your box into the next level that like you sort of have to do these things. Like, like if you get down to Bantam weight, the guy can't think really. You know, there's maybe potentially one opponent you would have in, in Ireland. You know, there's, yeah. there's not much competition there. Whereas Super Bantam weight that you're coming back to is absolutely loaded with talent. Like these three years you've been in the ring, like boxing completely changed. You'll probably feel like the the new guy coming in back into the sport. You know, after that period of time, like. The amount of pros that's now in the game and you're going, where have you come from? Who are you? Sort of, and people will not even know you because you were boxing before them. But yeah, boxing thriving in Ireland since you 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 haven't boxed. Yeah, especially at the lower weights. Do you know what I mean? There was nobody really around. Whenever I think, I think it was only me and Paddy Barnes. I think. Do you know what I mean? But now it's um obviously in the pros, but. No, it's it's massive. Like you've Connor Cunnings came back from Australia and he's flying at the moment. Like he's main event next week for for the Commonwealth title. Do you know what I mean? Down a flyweight, and then you've obviously the lads fighting for the Irish titles at super bantamweight, and it's just buzzing at the minute. It's like the domestic scene, as as you'll know, and obviously being a big fan of the sport, like the domestic fights are what make boxing, and, and sometimes it takes you to that next level. You know, obviously we we've seen with Connor Quinn where even at flyweight he doesn't have opponents in Ireland, so he sort of had the they push sooner into these these bigger fights. Like it's it's probably good for you in a way where you have someone like Connor there in the gym. He's are around the same age. So yeah. and obviously he's come back from Australia it was at a stage where he was told he might not box again and now he's flying like well this is his tenth or eleventh fight next week. First fight under Frank Warren and a perfect perfect probably guideline for you in a way they they bring you back and work similar to what he has. Exactly, I think it shows when you've got the proper like team and the proper management around you how how quick you can get up the ladder, and obviously that's down to Connor as well, putting in the training and and putting in the work and winning as well. You know, what I mean, putting on the good performances. You don't get there for no reason, but um, yeah. So I think um, it's great to have it's great to have Connor there in the gym. You know, learn off him and uh, obviously speak to him, and obviously at that lower weight, so it'll, it suits like you know what I mean. And like when you're coming back, like do you have like a sort of time frame of, of when you expect to obviously the you know to be back in the ring again for your sixth profile? Like I'm guessing you're obviously you just signed your deal and things like that, so it's working out now when when you can get a fight. Yeah, well we plan hopefully getting out in September. Hopefully, hopefully here in Ireland, all been well. 
so hopefully that'll be announced very soon. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very good for for Tyrone and Oma and our family and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be right. Speaking obviously of Tyrone, obviously um, we're a week out from Fergal McCrory, obviously fighting for a world title in, in Washington DC. Like five years we went without a world champion, and pretty much within six weeks we could have two. You know, obviously it shows you how quick the conveyor belt can go, but. Well, it's obviously, what's the mood in, in the Tyrone sort of area like at the moment? Obviously, for Fergal's fight next week. I know exactly. That's that's massive for Tyrone boxing. Do you know what I mean? Like, Tyrone boxing is probably its, its best at the minute. You've obviously got Fergal challenging for the world title next week, and you've got Tiernan fighting next weekend as well in his 10th pro fight. And then um, you obviously have Cahal McLaughlin and Theo Allen. They're from Tyrone. They're making their pro debuts. And then, obviously, you've got Jude Gallagher, who's going to be fighting in the Olympics in the summer. Do you know what I mean? So... Throwing boxings, it's at its best. We've we've spoken about this before, obviously the talent that there is in, in Tyrone and you know, yeah. like they think it somebody like Fergal, obviously, to become a world champion next week, like a seventeenth pro fight. He had a period of time at the ring as well, similar to yourself. And it's shown how quickly like I think this is maybe his fourth or fifth fight back after about two or three years out of the ring as well, and it shows you like he was world ranked after his last fight. In, in March, and there he is straight away fighting for world title. Exactly, it just goes to show you he obviously has the right management around him. Do you know what I mean? And the right team, and uh, there's no reason why he can't win. Do you know what I mean? Every dog, as he says, every dog has its day. You seen Cortina against Kikachi. Do you know what I mean? There's no reason why Fergal can't win. Imagine Fergal against Kikachi and for unification. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Like that'd be the that is, that is super featherweight world title. Super featherweight, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that potentially, obviously, Kakachi obviously has to fight Nunez in the in the main frame. So obviously, if that comes through, then there's a potential of obviously that being, you know, a, 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 the first all Irish world title fight. You know, honestly, that's what I was going to say. I was I was thinking about thinking about that last night. Was I was thinking that a an Irish fighter ever fight another Irish fighter for a world title? Did they know? I don't believe so. If we are wrong, somebody will correct us on it, no doubt. But I don't that's believe there's ever ever been two. Particularly in a unification as well, you know there may no, no reason. There may have been years and years ago, obviously, and and some of the other forms of titles there was, but in in my my mind, I can't think there's ever been one, even a unification that that as well. So it'd be huge. Mad. And mad. The, the way boxing and sadly is as well, it'll probably end up in a different country that we wouldn't even get to see. I hope over in Saudi or something. You know, um, obviously speaking on your own brother, obviously Tiernan, obviously you know. He's been he's relocated obviously the last couple of years away from from obviously Tyrone and settled on in Brighton. Like has tenth pro fight next week. I, I know there's potentially obviously in the works for for a fight card in, in Ireland for for Tiernan and Kieran Kieran Malloy before the end of the year. But what have you sort of made of Tiernan sort of rise? Like he sort of, I guess during a lot of his was done during COVID as well. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, during COVID, a lot of a lot of fights in Spain and Poland and Belgium as well. Um, but obviously now he's he's back now. He's he's in Brighton and he's he's got a good management team around him now. He's signed a promotional deal, which is very good. You know what I mean? That's that's what you want. You want the promotional deals, and uh, they're going to be keeping him active. They're he's fighting the fell eleven and two Norwegian. I think he was Norwegian national champion as well. So he's going to be no dozer. So that'll be a tough fight for him. And, and, and obviously, he's got the, the zone as well. Exactly. The zone signed up with GBM, so that's massive. And then, obviously, hopefully, get the, the show in Ireland before the end of the year. He's hoping to get a title fight in that. You, you've been, you've been obviously, quite a lot of his fights as well. Like, obviously, I'd, I've always kept an eye to see his, his column at the fight. And you, you've been at the fight. You've probably been your brother's biggest supporter. And I guess that's, that's, that's the way families are. You're, you're either the biggest supporter or you're the worst supporter. You know, growing exactly. up, all of these would have fought the butt out. Um, but I guess like do you still have that dream of the two he's fighting the same card? Yeah, hundred percent. Hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later. But uh, definitely it'll be it'll be unreal for the for us and the family. It'll be class. You you're moving down and wait so that he can't call you out as well. Is that the case? Exactly. I'm staying away from him. Staying away from that player. <laughs> <laughs> but he, from he's all them beatings. All them beatings. I used to give him up in the whenever we were sparring in the bedroom <laughs> all the time. <laughs> And, and now, obviously, now that he's like, I think he's sort of like a, he's got like a Jekyll and Hyde thing now, isn't it? Like he's Irish, Irish TP or sweet tea, sweet, sweet TP, yeah. So he's, he's sort of got two, two, different, 
two different styles and obviously it depends on the fight but um you know i guess you know for the family you know it's, it's probably trying to get something to work out with the two who's can be in the, the same card it, it may have to get to the stage where one is just fighting for a world title to, to call the shots to get the other one on yeah yeah definitely um but uh but hopefully hopefully it's i'll not say too much but hopefully it's it's very soon anyway that we're going to be in the same card so it is if it's if it's what I'm thinking, obviously without saying anything, I think of a of a of a fair idea. Um, were you three years sort of in activity? Like whenever you come back, like how active are you going to be? Like obviously, were were we seeing where you had, you know, you had three fights in six months, sort of, and then sort of COVID. Well, you had your fourth fight before COVID happened, but is the plan to stay as active as possible? Like. Obviously, I'm guessing you're going to try and get a few fights before the end of 2024 before you maybe start looking at titles in 2025. Yeah, well, the plan is now, it's it's good that I've got a plan in place now. So it's going to be hopefully about twice now before the end of the year. So I'm not going to be going into the 2025 with 7 and 0. Do you know what I mean? Especially down at Bantam, that'll be, you're probably going to be very highly ranked, you know, in Britain. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's about building up the rounds for me as well. Like I only done five, four rounders. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm doing more in sparring and stuff, but it's different on fight day. So, build up to six and then build up to eight. So, it's just about getting active now and then building up the rounds. Yeah, obviously. And you can move very quickly at that as well. Like, you could, probably you could even say for your comeback in September, you could probably do a six rounder, but it's getting yourself used to it. It's all right doing it in sparring and everything else. But it's it's that red mist that's going to gonna come into play whenever you get into the ring and go, on, I just want to blow this guy out of here. And then, and then you realize that. They're durable and they can last, and you go another five rounds to go. <laughs> another five rounds to go here, you know. Um, but I guess it's you know, it's, it's horses for courses sort of thing. You know, like you can do all the rounds in the world, but until you get in there, you know, you could blow something out in thirty seconds in a four round fight, and you're sort of going, well, "Why is that not six? But like you build the you build the right team around you now, so obviously your confidence is going to be sky high coming back into the ring. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, obviously training up with E as well. And, you know, D's ex- undefeated professional, you know what I mean? He's a very experienced, so it's good. To, it's going to be good to have him in the corner. You know, I've had him in the corner now for spars, and we've gelled really well, do you know what I mean? So that's a big thing as well, obviously, for the longer rounds, the experience. So you'll see things that, that you can chop and change in the corner, do you know what I mean? So that's what it is, just about getting back active now. You know, hopefully it's going to be in the next couple of months. Uh, hopefully hopefully straight back in the sixth rounder. I'm, I'm ready to go, do you know what I mean? I'm fit and ready, so straight back in and then build on for 2025. If I go on to, hopefully maybe get a... Once people see that I'm, I'm back and I'm looking good, hopefully then a promoters will start looking at me then. Obviously, when you when you look to it, you know, them sort of weight classes, like, you know, abandon weight, like you could push very quickly. It's similar in a way of Conor Quinn, where you don't have... You know, even sort of in the UK, sort of seen there as well. That there's not a lot of opponents there. So, like, where would you sort of set your mantle to? Would you sort of look at like the Commonwealth British sort of route? Where would you sort? Where are you sort of setting your plan? Yeah, hundred percent. That's the plan. We're going to go like we're going to go straight for the British title. You know, not straight up, obviously straight for the British title, but that's the route that we're going to take. Do you know what I mean? That's we, we plan on fighting for the British title. Do you know so what I mean? Like, there's no reason. Sorry, I was going to say it'd be like sort of like Commonwealth. You know, the sort of seems to be the way now. It's like Commonwealth silver, Commonwealth British, European sort of like the old way you sort of would have went towards world titles. You know, where you you tick off every every title yeah. along that sort of way. Exactly, they're the belts you want. You know what I mean? They're the belts that the promoters want to put on their shoes as well. You know what I mean? They want to put on the Commonwealth titles, uh, the British titles, and like I said earlier, at, at my weight, like boys are fighting for that title. At, 11 and 1, 12 and 1 boys are them type of records. Do you know what I mean? They're getting chances. So there's no reason why in 18 months I can't be challenging for the British title. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I could even come before that sooner as well, you know. Yeah. Um, Obviously, with you returning, I guess, obviously be three years out of the ring, a lot of the sponsors you've probably had beforehand, like, have they started to make the contact with you again? Do they restart up again? Or are you on the, are in the lookout for sponsors? How's that sort of sitting for you? Well, obviously, I've kept this. I've kept this sort of on the low now, so they'll probably they'll probably get on to me, you know, just to say. But a few, a few's gonna be jumping back on board, and then obviously a few more as well. So, obviously, with me building up my uh, uh, business with the gym and then the clients and stuff, and they they have businesses and stuff. So they're they're gonna be a massive help as well. So, it's gonna be hopefully good. Yeah, it was. But, but look, obviously, it's great to get a catch up. Obviously, delighted to see you coming back. 
Um, we'll obviously look forward to you, to you getting some fight news, and I'm sure we'll pop into the gym when you're up more regular with D here as well to see how you're getting on. Yeah. Definitely, you're more than welcome. <laughs> yeah, maybe listen. Hey, well, you get coffee as well. Coffee? You're gonna buy me a coffee or I'll uh, buy a new one? I'll buy you one. <laughs> all, nice. the, all the hard work. Here, it's not very often fighters are are promising to buy me a coffee nowadays. Um, yeah. Connor Quinn's probably Connor Quinn actually bought me a coffee the other week. Um, really. And I was actually going to take it home and frame it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, you know. Um, but look, obviously, it's great to catch up. Great to hear, obviously, your, your, obviously your news at your back. And we'll look forward to hearing you getting some fight news soon. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers, Callum. Speak to you soon. Cheers, Morty. Cheers, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.